We're going to continue on with our second video on exact differential equations. But we're going to take a look at what happens when the function doesn't appear to be exact in the first place. Well, just like before, we can multiply by an integrating factor. And once we multiply by that integrating factor, it will turn our equation into an exact differential equation. So again, if we start with a function of this form or this form, and one of these two things happen, either the partial of m with respect to x minus the partial of n with respect to t divided by the original function n, if that is a function of t by itself, or t alone, uh, then we can use this as an integrating factor, e raised to the integral of this term right here with respect to t. Okay. And similarly, if partial of m with, uh, with respect to x minus the partial of n with respect to t divided by negative m is a function of x alone, then our integrating factor will be e raised to the integral of that uh, term with respect to x. And if we do that, if we multiply everything by that, then by that integrating factor, then our new equation will be a, an exact equation. Okay, so let's take a look at this first example. We want this to be an exact equation. Well, Let's see. Let's see if it is. Well, if it is, then this means the partial with respect to x would equal the partial with respect to t. Well, the partial with respect to x here is 1, and the partial with respect to t here is 2tx minus 1. Those are not equivalent, so this is not exact. As in, when we take the antiderivatives, we'll not be able to find a function where the derivative with respect to t is 2t squared plus x, and the derivative with respect to x is xt squared minus t. So we won't be able to find that. But what if, so we had this function here, where again, m was, I'm sorry, m sub x was 1, and n sub t was 2xt minus 1. Well, notice m sub x minus n sub t all over capital N is, this is 1 minus 2xt minus 1 all over xt squared minus t, this is equal to negative 2xt plus 2 all over xt squared minus t, which is equal to negative 2 times xt minus 1 all over, and we can factor out a t in the denominator as well, so this is t times xt minus 1. So this cancels and we get negative two over t. So this expression right here, the partial of m with respect to x minus the partial of n with respect to t all divided by the original function n is a function of t alone. So there's no x's in there. And in fact, it is explicitly negative two over t. What that tells us is that the integrating factor is going to be e raised to the integral of that expression that we had. So let's do that. The integral of negative 2 over t with respect to t is negative 2 ln absolute value of t. So our integrating factor is equal to e raised to the negative 2 ln of t 
which is equal to t to the negative second power. So what we want to do is multiply our original function by this integrating factor. So t to the raised to the negative two. So look what happens when we do that. If we multiply everything here by t raised to the negative two, this is just two plus x over t squared plus x minus one over t x prime is equal to zero. We multiply by t to the negative two on the right as well, but we get zero times that, so that's just still zero. Okay, well, once we are there, notice what happens. If this is our new e expression, right, and we multiplied everything by t raised to the negative two, so we didn't change the function really, because um, we multiplied both sides of this expression or this equation by t to the negative two. Um, so the only thing we did is we introduced a point t equal to zero where we can't have a solution, right? We can't have t equal to zero at this point. So we introduced a uh, problem there, but other than that, uh, everything should uh, work out. Now, let's take our partial with risk of m with respect to x, and here we get one over t squared. Let's take the partial of n with respect to t, and we notice that again, we're gonna get one over t squared, right? Where this is n. So we get one over t squared in both of these. This means they are equal, which means our, this new function here is an exact equation. Oops. This new differential equation here is exact. So we can solve this just as before. All right, so let's do that. Uh, when we do that, we want to take the integral of two plus x over t squared with respect to t. So the integral of this with respect to t is 2t uh, minus x over t plus some function of x. And then we want the integral of n, which is x minus one over t. We want to take the integral of that with respect to x. So this is one half x squared minus x over t plus some function of y. All right. Uh, well, if we combine everything, notice that we have uh, negative x over t here. In both equations, we have a function of, this should not have been of y, this should have been of t here. And then we have a function of t, 2t, and then we have a function of x, which is 1 half x squared. And we put all that together, and we get f of t of x equal to c is really 2t minus x over t plus x squared over 2 is equal to c. And that is the implicit solution to our differential equation. Okay, let's continue on and do most of a second example here. So again, if we try to see if this is exact by taking the partial of m with respect to x, well, what do we get? We get 3tx squared. And if we take the partial of n with respect to t, and we get 2tx squared here. Well, notice that those are not equal. <clears throat> so. Uh, we do not have an exact equation. But we may notice that 
m sub x minus n sub t here. So the partial of m with respect to x minus the partial of n with respect to t, all divided by negative m is equal to 3tx squared minus 2tx squared, all divided by negative tx cubed. This is equal to tx squared over negative tx cubed, which is equal to negative 1 over x. And that is a function of x. So our integrating factor is going to be e raised to the integral of negative 1 over x dx, which is e to the negative ln absolute value of x, which is x to the negative first power. So let's go ahead and multiply that through on this equation up here. And we get tx squared dt plus t squared x plus 1 over x dx is equal to 0. All right. Uh, well, now we might notice that this is a an exact equation, right? What is the partial of tx squared with respect to x? Well, that is 2tx. And what is the partial of t squared x plus 1 over x with respect to t? Well, that is also 2tx. So those are equal, which tells us that this new equ expression here, this new equation here, is an exact equation. So we're going to solve that one now. Uh, and actually, I will leave that up to y'all to finish out for these notes. Uh, you just finish that out exactly like you did uh, problems one, two, three, and four in this notes on that first video. All right. Uh, and when you do, you should end up with t squared x squared plus uh, over two plus ln of x is equal to a constant c. All right. And that ends this video.